Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and in this session we are going to learn about the concept of volcanism, its various types and its characteristics. So before we go ahead, please like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about volcanoes and volcanism. So first thing is this word itself. So if you look at Italian word volcano, Basically, it means burning mountain. So that is in Italian. Then from Latin Vulcanus, that is coming Vulcan. So this is Roman god of fire. So remember, Vulcan is basically Roman god of fire as we see. So it is also fire, flames, volcano. So basically, when we talk about volcanoes, the origin of the word relates to burning or fire. Right? Now let's understand furthermore. So, what is a volcano? It is an opening in the earth's crust. So, as we remember learning about the different layers of earth, so crust is the uppermost layer and volcano is the opening in that layer through which molten lava, ash, gases are ejected. So, a similar opening on the surface of another planet can also be called volcano only. So, remember volcano is not just there on the earth but other planets and celestial bodies as well. So mountain formed by the materials ejected from a volcano. So remember that is important that volcanic mountains are also there as we saw in the previous picture. So we have that vent on the mountain and then there is a coming out of lava from this particular vent. So as we know volcano we understand it is basically a weak zone. It is an opening which leads to the coming out of the molten lava or the magma material from within the surface of the earth on the crust. Now, when we understand that the material that comes out is called magma, let's understand what is its type. So, first is called granitic magma. The word itself is granite. So, it consists of light colored rock. That is one thing. And it is not as heavy as basaltic magma. Granitic magma is very sticky in nature and it flows rather slowly. So that is important. It is sticky, it is viscous and flows very slowly. So as we know, granite is formed by the gradual cooling of that particular magma. Then basaltic magma consists of dark color rocks. So remember one is light color and basalt is dark color and is much heavier than granitic magma. It has heavier elements. So it flows more fluidly than molten granitic magma. That is the difference between granitic and basaltic magma. But apart from this magma classification into granitic and basaltic, we also have something that is important. These important terminologies. So te tephra, pyroclasts, tuff, lahar. So what are these? Let's understand. Tephra is a fragmental material. So it is fragmental, broken into various pieces produced by volcanic eruption regardless of, remember, regardless of composition, fragment size or emplacement mechanism that is movement from one place. So it is regardless of these three things that can be a multiple choice question, remember that. So tephra is basically name given to all those set of materials that are released by the volcanic eruption in the form of fragments. The fragments may vary in size, in composition and in emplacement as well. Now, volcanologists also refer to this airborne fragments. Remember, when there is a volcanic eruption, lots of smoke and fumes and other particles come out. So what happens? This is what is airborne. So these airborne fragments are also known as pyroclasts. So that is important. So now you understand that what is the difference between magma and pyroclast? Pyroclast is that airborne material, right? So that is important here. So once clasts have fallen on the ground, they remain as tephra unless hot enough to fuse together into pyroclastic rock that is called tuff. So tough is basically what? The congregation when it comes together, that tephra material and finally forms a rock. So that is called tough. Then lahar. So what is this lahar? It is a violent type of mud flow or debris flow. Now remember it is part of the mud flow or debris flow. So we are going to learn about this mud flow and debris flow in details when we study mass wasting in denudational processes in the lectures to come. So for now we can understand that it is basically a mud flow or debris flow composed of slurry of these pyroclastic material, rocky debris and water. 
So it is basically a entire flood that happens. So largely it is a volcanic flood that is called lahars. Now, when we have understood the concept of volcano and these special terminologies, now it's time to study the classification of these volcanoes and the landforms. So remember, volcanoes are classified on the basis of the form that is developed on the surface, right? That we call landforms. So that is the first classification. So it is called shield volcano, cinder cone, composite volcano, caldera volcano and fisher volcano. Now remember these first words of each of them. These are what is the shape. These are the morphology. These are the features or the landforms. So that is how this is entirely a landform classification. So that is important to understand. Now one by one from shield to this fisher volcano, we are going to look into the details. So first of all, the shield volcano. Now look into this picture. How does it look? Lava flows, what is happening through this vent, right? And this is what we say is as shield. So remember, if you understand what is a shield, in Hindi we say dhal. So this is the hand, right? And this hand is actually holding the shield. So if you look at this in particular way, so you can see that this is the hand, right? And this is the shield. So you can turn it like this. So this looks like a shield. So shield volcanoes can span across hundreds of miles. Remember, that is important. And shield volcanoes have slow slope. So they don't have this, you know, sharp angles. They are gradual. That's how they are shield, right? So they have slow slope and consists of frozen lava as well when it is hardened. So shield volcanoes almost always have larger craters. That is important. That larger craters are there at the summit. So that is important to remember in shield volcanoes. So furthermore, what we see here is one of the examples. So Mauna Loa, that is in Hawaii. So hundreds of miles across many tens of thousands and feet. So this is one of the important examples of the shield volcano. So it consists almost entirely of the frozen lavas and large craters at their summit. So that is important here. Furthermore, what we have learned is Mauna Loa, it looks like this, look at the picture and then Olympus Mons is one of the other example which is big and long, so that is important. Now, the second one that we know is Cinder Cone. So now it is not a shield, it is a conical shape that we see. So now the slope angle is now growing. Remember, that was a little lower angle, now it is getting higher here. So cinder cone volcanoes consist mostly of loose grainy cinders and have very little to no lava, right? So they have rock fragments. So they are normally small about a mile span and about 1000 feet vertically. So cinder cone volcanoes have fairly steeper slopes as we know and normally have a smaller crater at the top. So if you have two images given side by side, now I think you can identify that which is what. So which is cinder cone and which is the shield volcano, basis of the shape that is the morphology that we say, right? now. Cinder cones further what we see is look like this. So remember this SP crater and this is here. So they can issue low volatile flows quietly oozing from the vent. That is important. So Hawaii also has several cinder cone volcanoes in action if you see here. Right? In the lava coming out from the vent. So that is what we have learned. So we see here the shape is almost conical. Now coming to the third one that is called composite volcanoes. So they have another name also known as stratovolcanoes. Remember stratigraphy, stratification means layers. That is what we understand. And it is also said composite. It means it is composed. It means it has more than one layer. So they have this composition that we understand of what? Of this lava which is mixed with sand and gravel which in turn creates these cinders or volcanic ash as we remember in the cinder cone. So these are volcanic formations or the ash that we see. So that is important here. Now further when we see example of this composite volcano we can see Vesuvius, Krakatoa, Fusiyama and Mount St. Helens. So remember these four names what we see for the best example of these composite volcanoes. So Vesuvius, Krakatoa, Fujiyama and Mount St. Helens. So your task is to locate all this on the world map for your practice. So 
One of the examples as we have learned is Mount Fujiyama. So it is a classic example of this particular composite cone. So it has been built up over a time period that we understand and it has tendency to generate extremely violent events mixed with or more moderate events. So that is important and Mount Fujiyama is one of the best examples for composite volcanoes. Now let's go to the fourth type that is called caldera volcanoes. So remember this word caldera. Caldera is basically for this word giant. So it is one of the biggest opening. It is one of the giants, most big, right? So that is important. So it has a circular depression in this ground over a magma chamber. So this is a magma chamber from where the magma comes out. But now this is a depression created. And remember, this depression in caldera volcanoes are covered with lava and volcanic ash, making it hard to recognize. From upper surface, it is many times also difficult to recognize it because it is so big that all these eruptions fall back to this own vent itself. So this doesn't go out much rather than falling back into its own vent. So that is important in caldera formation. So this type of volcano is easier noticed from space due to the distance and viewpoint. Right? So if you go into the space and look into this particular kind of volcano that is caldera, it is very clear in its view and when this volcano erupts, it can spew volcanic rocks for miles and miles. So remember if it erupts from this surface and if it crosses out its own vent, then it can go for miles and miles. So it's a huge kind of opening that we need to understand. So look into the example. So highly explosive eruptions that lead to structural collapse from an emptied magma chamber. So look into this particular image. So Long Valley Caldera is one of the most important areas where it has 15 miles wide structure that is rhyolitic structure. Rhyolitic is a magma formation. So 760,000 years old released 160 cubic miles of material. So that is one of the ancient, right? So that is important here. Now, the last one in the formation part that is the classification on the basis of landform is the fissure volcano. So as we understand fissure that is opening along the ground. So they are hard to recognize from the ground and sometimes from the space. So fissure volcanoes have no main crater. Remember it doesn't have just one opening. It has several openings on the surface. So it has fissures that develop. Right? So that is important. The ground just splits and lava pours out through the cracks. So after fissure volcano erupts, it has cooled because it's solid, it will look mainly like the plains. So largely it has a planar surface rather than a conical surface. So it largely leads to the formation of lava plateaus. So that is important in fissure volcanoes. Now further in volcanism, the next thing that we need to learn is the types of rock that we see is because of eruption. So igneous is extrusive formation that we understand. So basalt that is silica content between 48 to 55 percent. Now remember all these material have different different silica content. So question may be asked on the basis of that also. So basalt has how much 48 to 55 percent. Andesitic magma has 55 percent to 60 percent. Decitic magma has 60 to 70 percent and rhyolitic magma has 70 percent and above. So remember if we go by this trend, you can remember it as bad R. Remember this bad R. So if you have to remember the types of magma and silica content in synchrony from low to high, it is bad R, B-A-D-R. So basalt, andesite, decite, rhyolite. So silica is minimum in basalt, maximum in rhyolite. That is one important thing. Now, further what we see is the viscosity. So basaltic lava is low silica, low viscosity, right? Andesitic is medium silica, higher viscosity than basalt. And decite and rhyolite have higher silica and highest viscosity. So that is again what we understand is bad R in terms of the viscosity as well. Now, rock class determines landform type and eruption style. So as we have already learned these five types, so what we understand, cinder cones has basalt that is mildly explosive, then shield volcanoes, basalt, composite volcanoes, andesite and decitic material, lava domes, right, that are important, have decite to rhyolite, and calderas have andesite to rhyolite. So these are important types of the material that is coming out of different types of volcanic landforms so that we have studied. Now, the last part of this session is again the 
last type of classification that is the second type of classification based on the characteristic or the nature of eruption so nature of eruption basically means how violent is the eruption is it silent or is it violent so on that basis also there is a classification so this is one image which has been taken from encyclopedia you can also have a look at it so first one is icelandic remember this is icelandic then second is called hawaiian so this is hawaiian then we have strombolian so the third one is strombolian so vulcan is the word so vulcanian is the fourth one then fifth one is the pelian and this last one is plinian that is vesuvian it is the biggest type of eruption so on the basis of nature of eruption we have six major types and on the basis of landforms we have five major types as we have studied so now one by one let's understand the characteristic of all these six so first one as we know is the icelandic type remember earlier we have learned about the fissured eruption so icelandic is largely the fissured eruption type only right so it has very less of violence if we say so it is less violent magma that comes out from the fissures so it forms lava plateau that is important to remember here so if we understand lava plateau formation where also we can find the examples are Deccan trap, Deccan, Deccan region, Deccan lava formation. So those are also part of mostly the fissured eruption that made the plateau long time ago. Then the next type that we know is the Hawaiian type. So Hawaiian type is similar to Icelandic variety, but the lava formation here is in the form of the summit. So basically the release of lava is not from the fissures, but from a summit. So that is important. But it is also not that violent as per example as we see further. So that is another type. Now, the next one, the third one is Strombolian eruptions. The word is Strombolian. It is coming from Stromboli Island of the northeast coast of Italy. So that is also known as Lighthouse of Mediterranean. Now this is important to remember this particular sobriquet or the phrase Lighthouse of Mediterranean. The Stromboli volcano is called lighthouse because remember the function of lighthouse? It keeps on burning and gives light to the sailors in the ancient as well in the time of age of discovery. So that's how it gets its name. So it continuously keeps burning. So it is not that bigger an eruption but it is continuous largely. So that is important here. So Strombolian eruption, right? And it is largely cyclical in nature and continuous in nature. So that is important. Now, the fourth one is called Vulcanian type. The word Vulcan itself, you remember? So, Vulcan Island near Stromboli, which we see, is famous for the moderate level of explosion, but larger than what we have seen in the Strombolian type. So, explosion of gas, laden and volcanic ash. So, remember this particular volcanic ash material that comes out? So, that is pyroclast. So, this mixture forms dark turbulent eruption clouds that rapidly ascend and expand in the convoluted shape. So, this is in comparison with the previous three, it is a bigger one, but it is still moderate. Now, this is one of the bigger ones. So, that is called Pelian eruption and it is associated with explosive outbursts. So, it is hazardous than the other ones and it has lots of lava and gaseous material coming out. So, Pelian eruptions are named after destructive eruption of Mount Pili on Caribbean island. Remember Caribbean island of Martinique in 1902 when it erupted. So, it was erupted with a big bang and pyroclastic flows and dense mixture of hot volcanic fragments and gases came out of this Pelian eruption. And finally, the most violent type is called the Plinian type or many times it is also known as Vesuvian type on the basis of this Mount Vesuvius that erupted in AD 79 and remember you must have also watched or if you have not there is a movie on the basis of this Mount Vesuvius eruption that is AD 79 as well. So it was during the Roman era and Roman scholar Pliny the Elder was described by his own nephew how he died and how the people of Pompeii remember the Pompeii was the city so it was all buried under the entire material coming out of this particular Mount Vesuvius eruption. So his own nephew wrote that account. So Pliny the Younger wrote about the death of Pliny the Elder. So that was documented and this is supposed to be the most violent type of eruption on the basis of the nature of eruption classification. And at last 
there are certain features that are important on the basis of deposition of the magma in different shapes. So that is important to remember. So look at this particular image. You have coding here, number one, number two, number three, number four, and you have the description here. So number one, what you see here is this, which is called lacolith. The word is lacolith. It is dome shape. So when lacolith is there, remember there is a dome formation. So dome shape intrusive body. It means it is not on the surface. It is inside. So it is intrusive forms. Remember that. So for example, Karnataka Plateau, we have several examples of this kind of dome hills, which are part of the earlier magma formation, right? Then number two and number four are called dikes. So where is number two? This is number two and this is number four. These are again intrusive forms. What we see is this is a neck. And this neck has further got into this layer where it is deposited. So it is perpendicular to the ground that we see, right? So this is what this entire number four and number two is perpendicular. So it is standing like a neck. So that is important here. Now the next one is number three, which is batholith. So this lower portion, what we see is the batholith, this entire portion. So this batholith is important as we see Ladakh. So that is a batholith example. Now it is exposed. So this is the base of the entire magma chamber, which is intrusive form deposition. Then further, what we see is the sills, the fifth one. The fifth one is this particular sills, right? So sills are near horizontal bodies of intrusive igneous rock. So remember, dikes are vertical, sills are horizontal. So DV and sills are horizontal. So if you have to remember, sills horizontal, dike vertical. And then there is another feature which is lapolith. So earlier we understand lacolith and this is lapolith or many times it is also written as lopolith at certain places. So lapo or lopo is what? Remember this number seven. Now this is not dome. It is just opposite of what we see is dome. So the dome is in the opposite direction that is called lapo or lopolith. So it is in horizontal direction. But remember, it is just opposite of the lacolith. Then what we have is another feature which is called facolith. And facolith is basically wavy mass of intrusive rocks. So if there is a wavy mass wave formation of this lava, then it is called facolith. And it is many times on earth exposed as the hills which we see. And these are largely in the folded regions, folded regions of igneous rocks. So that is what we understand as the facolith. So now, when we have learned about the various concepts related to volcanism, its various classification, so in the lectures to come, we are going to talk about the other parts of the world physical geography. So stay tuned, stay safe and all the best wishes.